What's up guys, welcome back to another video, hope you're doing well today and welcome to Virile, the 1986 edition. So as the title of this video might have got your attention, I believe this might be the oldest track that has ever been made in MX Bikes history. If anybody knows of one older than this, then by all means, please do let me know. Um, but having a track layout that goes as far back as 1986 is actually quite crazy. Now, this is a track created by Rodi Van Halen, and it is his, his first ever track creation. It's located in France, and it says a track that his dad actually used to race at back in the day, which is very, very cool. So he's got some family ties to the track as well. So his first track ever created in the game, and I always do like trying people's first tracks, and then it's always nice if they then carry on track building to see where they started and then where they end up. So I do hope that he carries on making the tracks in the future as well. He has said in the post that scaling-wise, it is one-to-one. -one. So on the MX bike side of things, you can imagine it's probably a little bit on the smaller side. So I'm actually riding the Preview 250 today, and this is my first time riding one of the 250s since Preview 1. So I tried it for a handful of laps of Preview 1, and in Preview 2 and Preview 3, I've not actually touched it yet. So I'm, I'm very interested to see how this rides. Uh, I imagine it's probably a, a bit slower than the current OEM 250s, so it should be perfect to go around here. Track looks very straightforward, very, very simple, uh, but sometimes, you know, simple done well can be some of the most fun experiences to have. So let's spin some laps, see how it rides, and let's get into it. For all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, fxrracing.eu to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. Okay, so I'm keeping everything stock on this bike for this. The only difference I've made is I've slapped on the 120 rear tyre. I have a feeling that the 100 may be the default. Uh, it's the 12080 rather than the 12090. And and I don't know if that's just because that's what I'm used to, to riding on bikes in the game. You know, current OEMs, I tend to ride the 120 rear tyre more often than not. If anybody has spent a good amount of time testing these out and testing all the tyres in general, please do let me know what your findings are, because I'm, I'm intrigued to see what the, the meta is going to be. I've been a bit... I don't know if lost might be the right word over the last uh, week or two since aerials come to a close, um, because... As you know, we've got SMX coming up. I think SMX is in a, about a month's time uh, in game. And then we've also got the MX Bikes of Nations that's going to be coming up soon. Uh, qualifying for it is going to be at the very, very end of September. And then the actual race, I think, is going to be in the second week of October. So anybody going to the real life uh, Motocross of Nations can go and enjoy it without worrying about missing the video game, which is very nice of them to do. Um, so the reason I feel a bit lost is because I don't know what to practice, not just from an SMX or an outdoors perspective between between the SMX series and the, uh, the nations, but more so what bikes to ride because there's been no kind of there's been no hint or like message or anything or kind of like solid details about when preview bikes are going to release. So, so, preview have released, but when the full pack is going to release. In my mind, the fact that we had three sets of previews back to back to back in rapid succession makes me think that they want to release it before SMX. But at the same time, I don't want to then spend loads of time riding these bikes for the pack not to come out. And then I need to try and get my head around the current OEMs again, because if, if you ride these for any prolonged period of time and then switch back over to the current OEMs, it almost feels like you can't turn because of how much grip there is. Actually getting the bike cranked over feels very strange, and it almost feels like the front end just doesn't want to go around the corner. And it's, all, it's always weird looking back at different bikes over time when you get used to something different, because the current OEMs, I think everyone can agree, they feel like some of the fastest bikes we ever had in the game. Yet yeah, then when you ride these for a little bit and go back, they feel almost like quite heavy and hard to hard to turn sometimes. I mean, obviously the traction is insane and the speed's insane, but maybe that's why I struggle a bit. Uh, but I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm, I don't know where to spend my time at the moment, whether it's indoors or outdoors, or whether it's on previews or non-previews. I don't know what to do. So I guess I'm just kind of dabbling in a little bit here and there. Uh, if anybody wants any information regarding the MX Bikes and Nations, because I do get messages now and then of people asking how you go about qualifying for it. It's not on a sign-up basis, but what the admins do is they take the combined points for the entire year, so they combine Supercross points, GP points and MX points, uh, combine them all together, and then the top nine from each country will get added to a, to a group chat. So 
if that is you, you'll get added to a group chat eventually, and you've been, I guess, selected to try and qualify for your nation. If that is not you, and you don't get added to anything, unfortunately, you uh, you just missed the mark. Uh, but how it works is they add you to a group chat, and uh, among amongst the nine of you, if there is nine, there might be less, you decide what groups you want to try and qualify for, whether it's MX1, MX2, or Open. Um, and then, I think, yeah, back into September, how it's going to work is there will be two motos, two 30 minute plus two motos, where you qualify against whatever countryman. So let's say uh, myself and uh, Jake and Aiden and Tyler, we all wanted to ride MX1. Can't do that, it's only three actually. Uh, myself, Jake and Aiden, let's say we all wanted to ride MX1 on the 450s for Great Britain. Uh, on back end of September, we would all race against each other, two 30 minute plus two motos. Whoever comes out victorious gets to race in MX1 or Great Britain. So that's just how it works. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, not open to everybody. Uh, but uh, who knows, maybe in, at some point in the future, there'll, uh, there'll be a way for everybody to try and get involved and represent whatever nation they want to. I believe for some of the really big nations, uh, like the US, for example, or even Great Britain as well, we have a lot of riders these days. Uh, they're looking at doing B teams as well. So maybe if you qualified or you had ninth to 18th points for whatever country you're in, uh, then you get put in to try and qualify for a B team. And uh, I mean, USA always has uh, a couple teams anyway, don't they? Uh, off the top of my head, one's Guam, isn't it? And one is it, uh, or was it? Is it Port? It's not Puerto Rico, is it? I'm going to show myself up here. This is really, really bad. My motocross knowledge is lacking today. Either way, that's how that works. And if you are from a, uh, let's say, I don't know, popular is not the right word. If you're from a country that doesn't have that many riders, let's say you have uh, two riders from your country across the entirety of the game, so you don't quite make up those three riders that you need, um, then what the aerial team are doing is they're just going to add one of the aerial mods to your team, which I don't mind. Some people get a bit funny about it because it's almost like they haven't, deserved to take part in the event but i think if you spend the time and effort to bring ariel to us week in and week out every single time and deal with the issues and complaints and whining this that and the other i feel like you deserve to have a ride in, in some regard so i don't mind that at all and it's quite cool because then if you are from one of the uh, less common countries then you do still get to represent your country with maybe one of your friends or your brother or something and then a plus one essentially now, some of you will have noticed I've been increasing the real life riding videos on the channel over the last month or so. It has been so, so nice to be able to go riding often ish. Uh, I generally could not tell you. I want to say it's probably been over five years since I rode three times in the space of a month. And that was the over this last month, like the last rolling month. Uh, and I've honestly absolutely loved it. And Every single time, so over let's say the last five years for example, every time I get back on a bike after not riding for half a year at a time and thinking, okay, I've got okay pace here for a lap, but my arms just can't do it. It's crazy how quickly that all that starts coming back because in the first few videos that I've done, if you remember when I rode that Varg for the first time and then rode the like, Suzuki two-stroke, etc., a lap and a half, two laps and my hands and forearms are finished. Then the next time riding the other Varg at Moto 101, it was more like three, maybe four laps. And then the last video that I uploaded riding around wild tracks on my bike, it was four, almost pushing five laps sometimes before the arms really, really got tired. And it's, I just, I love it. I love being able to hold on to a bike longer than a lap and be able to actually put in some decent time and laps. Unfortunately, if you're not from the UK, you probably don't get it. If you are from the UK, you know that uh, the riding season is soon coming to an end, and the weather here over winter is just atrocious. Uh, I'm not dedicated to the grind enough to be going out in the uh, the wind and the rain and the mud every single weekend. It's just not worth it. It's a lot of uh, lot of hassle for minimal gain. You know, I'm not going to go and win any titles anytime soon. I just ride for fun. So, uh, yeah, I'll probably be hanging up the boots probably for a couple of months over the winter. But it will give me a chance to hopefully just increase my cardio and overall fitness. I mean, I can already feel just after three rides, the actual bike fitness getting much better. But the actual cardio does does need some work. And I've been enjoying riding, to be fair. I'm, I'm so torn now because I was so... I so had my sights on buying a Varg as my next bike. But then after going back and riding my bike again, it's, like it's just so much more rewarding and satisfying when you get things right on a quote-unquote real bike uh, the Varg is easy mode I think anybody that has ever ridden one will be able to tell you that they are just e easy to ride they don't require much uh, much of a thought process you know it is twist the throttle and, and go essentially uh, they're a lot quicker their acceleration is quicker than any bike I've ever ridden um, 
But yeah, there was something about hopping back on my 250, and even if I just got one rut okay every now and then, which is my weak point right now, is uh, hitting ruts again. I absolutely suck ass in corners. Um, it's just, it's really, really satisfying. So I'm so on the fence. I'm so 50 50 on what to do, because I don't know bike maintenance. Like my whole life uh, growing up, my dad was my mechanic. He'd done everything for me bike wise, uh, it, even to the point he, he's quite OCD in that regard, to where. I know that even if I did take an interest in it and tried doing stuff myself, he'd probably still go and double check it anyway. That's just how he is. But I was very, very thankful for that, not having to do anything for myself. Unfortunately, the time's now come where I know nothing about bike maintenance. So, on one hand, start would be, well, the VARG would be very, very easy because there's just a lot less moving parts overall to maintain and, uh, and check. Uh, but oh, I don't know. It's It really is a tough one. It really, really is. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. First, I mean, first things first, I have to go, I have to get a van in the first place and find somewhere to even store a bike because you can't buy a bike if you have nowhere to put it. No, I had a really, really nice day. And to be fair, getting halfway through September in the UK and still having a day full of sunshine to the point where the nose did get a little bit red and a little bit crispy, you couldn't have asked for more. So, so lucky. Same, same with the week before, to be fair, at Mario 101. Just perfect weather all day long. And you can't really ask for much more than that. I'm, I'm at the point now where but I'm I'm a very uh, I don't know the right word for across the pond. In case, we'll just say tight with with money. Very stingy. Don't like splashing the cash too much. I save most of my life, like in my working years. Um, but it's got to the point now where I'm just like, you know what? It doesn't follow you to the grave. You may as well spend it while you can. So just going out and, and riding fairly often, I really don't mind, and it's something that I just genuinely love so much. And it's more of um. I want to say it's more of a stress relief than anything else. I don't know if anyone else can relate to that, but I remember going through like prolonged periods of time of, you know, especially over like COVID period of just sitting there rotting away indoors. Uh, that was when I still worked as an accountant back then as well. And it's just like you wake up, you work in your room, you then have your quote unquote leisure playing like video games, whatever in your room as well. Yeah, it's cool to get out of the house and go for a walk or a bike ride for a little bit of exercise now and then, but. Other than that, you have no like real, real stress relief, and I always feel so good the day after riding, and I just get that itch of wanting to go out again. And uh, I, I guess I should kind of be in my prime right about now at this time, but it hasn't really turned out that way. And I want to get back to that and just be able to get the most out of the riding whilst I can do it. So who knows what the future holds? Bit for those of you that do quite often ask for real life riding videos, please do expect it to t to slow down a lot over the next couple of months. But come the new year, maybe like March or so time as the weather will start improving again, that's probably when we'll get, get back onto it. There's even been rumours of trips with the boys as well, whether that's going on like a, a biking holiday to Spain and riding a bunch of tracks over the course of a week. Or uh, I also I think it was Hammy posted in our group chat that we have that uh, at Dorno in, in Italy, they like they, they hire bikes and stuff like that there as well so that could also be another cool trip to do with the guys and for any of you that didn't know if you are newish to the channel and wasn't here at the, the start of this whole youtube journey uh, dorno in mx bikes not in real life was the first ever race that i did on this game competitively and was the race that i guess quote unquote got me famous and got people to know who i am because it was the first one I'd done, it was a 125 fun race and uh, straight away as soon as that race was done I uh, got a message from uh, from Mr McChicken and he was like, do you want to uh, join McCreations? And I was like, yeah, you know what, sure, why not? And it's been um, a very, very fun journey ever since then. I have to say, I haven't tried flat tracking yet, to be fair, so this could be a very, um, this is a small sample size to go off of. This 250 is really, really fun really really funny it handles great uh, the front end on the all these preview bikes i think have been incredible at uh, the back end you can feel it sliding just a tiny bit but it's good it's the right amount it's not like uncontrollable at all uh, you can kind of put the bike where you want it and i mean this track is quite straightforward it's quite easy but i'm having a really really fun time just kind of worming my way around this track it seems uh very chill you know it's an easy track that's for sure but again for a first track i said in the intro simple dumb right is always a really really good thing and i would say that uh, he has done a very very good job even like texturing as well but the track doesn't look like it's just a flat texture he's gone through the effort of creating some i guess like a really organic look and showing where bikes have and haven't been and i can really respect that because texturing i think is the hardest part of the whole track creation process um so roadie 
or Roddy, to be fair. My my French names leave a little bit to be desired, so I do apologise if I've mispronunciated that. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back and a round of applause. You've done a very, very good job here for a first track. And this is just such a fun track, and it's a good track as well if you're new to the game and you want to move away from like your forests or your XP clubs just to step things up in difficulty just a tiny bit, you know, have a little bit of line selection, have a couple more ruts, maybe some trickier ruts to get slotted into. This is probably where you want to be. I wouldn't recommend going above a 250 around a track like this uh, i think you'll be uh, breaking a lot everywhere this oem 250 preview bike feels perfect it does not feel too fast again i do want to say there's weird erode on these preview bikes couldn't tell you why that is I i'm sure there's some specific reason that they've put in patch notes or something like that but if you're like taking off and landing jumps i'm just getting weird little like holes appearing that I've never ever seen before and the, one of the other videos I've done the previews on Falcon Supercross track that was actually like the main topic of the thumbnail and the title was weird erode um, so I don't know if that's something that can be fixed or if it's the way that the new tyre is going to work I'm just hoping that it's not something that will be an issue when we get servers of like 35 people and a 30 minute plus too long race I'm hoping you don't just get craters appearing on the takeoff and landing of jumps. Uh, that's my only concern. Other than that, the bikes feel absolutely amazing. And I'm so happy that I've spent a little bit more time on them now. And I really just feel more comfortable. First time on these preview free 250s, to be fair. And the bike feels really, really good fun. I'm sure maybe you'll struggle hitting some triple wins on Supercross, for example. Uh, but if, if these are the bikes that we'll be using for the 2025 Supercross season, then you can imagine that the tracks would be scaled to accommodate that anyway so you wouldn't you wouldn't be struggling to trip in i don't think next year um, so good stuff all around great track really really fun very very much enjoyed that i don't think that was a rut that i just hit i think i just uh, hit the bit where it tells you where the track is but uh, w all around i look forward to seeing uh, mr van halen's work in the future if he wants to make anything more for us w's all around uh, i hope you've enjoyed this video if you did please do drop a like and subscribe channel if you are new that would be very much appreciated have a lovely rest of the day whatever you're up to and i'll catch you all in the next video. Peace. Lynn's in the zone, never back in now. Right, MX bikes, he's the tour for the channel. 2022 champ with a YouTube crown. His game is tight, no signs of slowing down. Late nights, bright lights, he's chasing that fame in the digital arena. Right in his name, she's a 10 out of 10. Support his lane, hairline might proceed, but his passion's the same.